Hello again. Welcome to uh, session four on Call API. This is the last session. Um, in this session, I'm going to show you how we can handle error responses um, that come back from any APIs. Uh, I'm also going to finish off uh, the tutorial sessions on Call API by just looking at a few extra things we can do with it as well. Um, so yeah, let's jump straight in. So um, you may remember from our other sessions, we created this weather bot. Uh, so I've just amended it, so let's say weather in London, right, it tells me it's scattered clouds, yep, so it's gone out to the API weather using the get method, our query, API key, and so on and so on, and then it's just brought it back there, get weather response. Right, that's fine there, but what happens if we put in uh, nonsense, so if we put something like that in, we're getting no response back. Why is that? That'll be because there's no city called whatever in open weather map. So we need to find a way of um, checking this for errors. Now you can use a condition on um, on this one on weather response. You know, if it's equal to left bracket, right bracket, um, display an error. But there's a built-in um, response code that we can use as well. So I'm just going to show you how to do that. So what we need, instead of um, just doing a basic call API, what we can put in as well is a response code there. Yeah, so on this one, I'm saying the status of the API call is going to be set to this weather response status. So now we can check this weather response to see um, if things work. So let's uh, try that. So, oops. So if I check in there, instead of just blindly displaying it back, whether it's worked or not, what we can do is to check the weather response. Okay, now, if everything's worked okay, the value of it should be equal to 200, right? So if everything's okay and it's worked at 200, what we want it to do is to display it back to the user. Otherwise, we want to say, well, just for now, we'll just put an error. Okay, right, so let's try that. Now, if we try weather London, we get back scattered clouds. But if we put weather and then something it doesn't know anything about, we get error and that's because the response code wasn't 200 yeah now what was the response code easiest way to find out is we can just check for it here uh, oops, so I should copy that okay so let's try that Weather. Okay, and the error is 404. Now, 404 is an error that means not found. Yep, so it couldn't find the weather for this, so it's produced the error. So we can make that a bit more of a friendly message. So we now know that if the weather response is 404, uh, we can say something like. Uh, well, well, Sorry, but I have never heard of a city called Sta. Yeah, and that presents it back to the user that way. Um, but it's always good, you know, just have these catch-alls as well. Otherwise, you know, if it's not 200 and it's not 404, we're not going to get anything back at all. So let's try that. Weather in anywhere. There we go. Sorry, but I never heard of a city called that. Yeah. So that's going to be a bit better than just displaying, um, you know, left, right brackets back to the user. Um, so that's how I use the uh, the uh, the weather response there. Okay. Um, what else you can do as well is, as well as just bringing API calls back, you can um, pretty much do, you know, bring anything as long as it's on the internet. Um, so one thing I've got is, um, I don't know if you can see this, but it's just a sample file with like some fruit. So uh, it's like a stock check for a, a grocer's shop. So 27 apples and how many straw packs of strawberries and things like that. 
Okay, now what we can do is as well as just bringing um, APIs, what we can do is let's make a new category and we'll call this one uh, check stock. Yeah, so what we're going to need to do is just to do a call API of, uh, of the stock that we've got. So let's put one in there. So pretty basic because it's only a text file. Uh, although it still says URL, you can, as long as it's on the internet, you can uh, bring, pretty much bring anything back. So now if I try check stock, yeah, it goes out and reads my file. Yeah, and it brings it back in there. So we can now kind of, um, you know, manipulate that um, as, as we like. So let's, just for a bit of fun, um, let's say set name equals stock. Equal to uh, whatever. That's equal to the value of our um, call API. Uh, let's, oops, let's tidy up a bit. Okay, right, so if we now call that check stock. Yeah. How it goes, but now it's made something called stock, and we can now sort of, you know, manipulate that as we we like. So, just for a bit of fun, let's. Uh, so we'll then straight out to format stock, and we can put in the contents of our stock list. Okay, so we can do category. Uh, we'll call this something like uh, put it in format stock. I mean, it's in the tidiest way to do it, but it is just you know just an experiment. Um, so what we can say is something like uh, let's do something like that. Yeah, so hopefully. Oops, let's try it. Format stock results. So check stock. There we go. It kind of reads it out. Reads for stock, displays it nicely like that, you see. Yeah, so, you know, it may be useful if, if you're working with something that isn't an API, you know, just a plain text file or something like that. You can, you know, kind of do things like that. Um, you know, even as far as, uh, let's put something like that in. Yeah, so that's saying the number of apples is the star there. Uh, so that allows us to do categories such as... Uh, Let's try something like, you know, how many apples do we have? Okay, so let's see if this, this works and then I'll just explain it briefly. So I'll check stock. How many apples are in stock? Yeah, currently 27 boxes of apples. Yeah. So you can kind of get stuff out of your own databases and things like that. Um, I mean, I've just used a text file, but if you've got something you can query on, then, you know, it's a lot better, you see. So uh, let's just briefly explain that because I went through that fairly quickly. So I've just done something called check stock, calls out my uh, stock text file, which is just a list of, you know, names and numbers. I then format them. So it's just a list. I mean, if yours is different, you may need to put in things like equals or ampersands and things like that. Displays it back to the user. Also sets up a few predicates there, which allows us to query things like how many apples or things like that. Um, so I hope that's useful. One thing I will say um, just to finish off call API um, is there's another part to it called header name. This is rarely used, but I'll cover it just in case. Uh, now, some uh, APIs like this image search from qwant.com, they need to know like where the, the search has come from, um, just to make sure it's not kind of some like automated uh, spam bot type thing. So it just 
you, you know, you just have to put in whatever it's expecting to see. So this is just saying, you know, if it's come from Firefox or, you know, Chrome, Safari, things like that, then it's OK. Yeah. Uh, but as I say, very rare you're going to need anything like this. Um, one, the only other thing I'm going to uh, just very briefly mention um, is as well as text files, you can actually bring back sort of entire um, websites. Uh, so let's get rid of the uh, Okay, so let's put test site. So if I save that, uh, oops, get rid of all that, that. Test site. Now this probably isn't going to be much use for any uh, kind of major site, but if you've got like a little small little site, you see what it's trying to do here? It's trying to bring back the entire Google um, homepage uh, website there. Yeah, so this probably isn't much use at the moment. But if you've got a smaller website that you just need to scrape something from, that's just a way to do it, you know, get the information there pass it through to something like this format stock results or whatever uh, format web page or anything like that. And hopefully um, you can work with it like that. So I think that's probably it for Call API. As I say, it's, you know, it's probably the best thing that's happened to uh, AML, you know, since the introduction of rich media elements like buttons and um, images and things like that. I'm finding it extremely useful for doing all kinds of things. And I hope you will do too. It is ex you know it can be complicated don't worry if you don't understand all this straight away i didn't um it's, you know just practice as with anything just practice if you do have any problems with it though just um drop a, a message down on stackoverflow.com um just tag it aml and i'll be more than happy to take a look and try and help you if i can okay so uh, i think that's it so um yeah have have fun with call api and um, I'll see you all in the uh, next session. Bye now.